everybody. This is uh, Back to Indigenous America's Art with the city of Cusco. Uh, it includes a couple of different pieces. One is a temple called the Cori Concha, uh, which will eventually turn into the uh, Church of Santo Domingo, and the walls of Saska Waman. Uh, and this, I had to put down uh, my favorite Disney movie image with Cusco here on the left. So all credit to Disney where, where that's due. Um, but we are again in Indigenous America's Unit 5 and going to take a look at this really interestingly laid out and um, a city with very interesting history. Uh, so here you have the site plan basically of the city. Uh, over here on the right hand side, let me get the pointer out. Right here is College Board's site plan. Uh, you can kind of see, I hope, that the city is in the shape of an animal called the puma. And I have an image of that up above. Um, this is kind of a debated idea, but many believe that the city was actually laid out in the shape of a puma, which is an animal to suggest uh, the Incan power and might in their rule. So, yeah, I mean, it looks too coincidental uh, or too real to be a coincidence actually. So, um, but I use the image on the left to show you a couple things. One is the city is divided into two sections, uh, an upper and a lower section, the upper section called Hanan Cusco and the lower section called Hurin uh, in Cusco. And then uh, also, well, one, those two divisions so show social divisions. Uh, you know, different social status would live in the upper Cusco and the lower social status would live in the lower. And Cusco is also divided into four quarters, two, three, and four, not necessarily in that order. And it's reflecting the four different divisions of the empire uh, around all over like, South America. And people lived in those four different quarters of the city Local leaders from all quarters of the empire in total lived in Cusco. So really the city itself reflects how the empire is organized and separated. And also, if you guys remember the term axis mundi, meaning uh, really it's a sacred site here on earth that connects directly to uh, the cosmos or the heavens and it really does reflect uh, that this site on Earth is most closely associated with um, the powers in the cosmos, you know, the gods and that. So it really elevates Cusco up to be not only the capital of the Incan Empire, but really at the center of the world and the center of the world's power. So um, again, knowing that site plan separated into two sections and also four quarters, and to be able to talk about that is probably a good idea since the, the site plan basically is something they want you to know. Now, moving on to probably the most important building in Cusco, it's the Cori Concha, uh, which was originally the temple to the sun god Inti. So you have a little picture of him here. Um, Cori Concha means golden house. And so this is the temple they erected to their sun god to worship that god. And, and one of the main reasons this building is so important, it's the center point of the empire. It connected uh, Cusco to, with kind of these imaginary lines radiating out from it, connected this temple to all other shrines throughout the empire. So really, this is the heart of the empire. And, you know, the Incans believed that they were descendants of the, of the sun god. So to have this here and, you know, imagine the building faced in gold and, you know, shine brightly in the sunlight, it'd be the reflection of the sun. Uh, so really was made to literally reflect the power of the sun god and the power of the Incan empire. And their stones here, you can kind of see it over here, especially um, were a bit unusual for Incan architecture because they were cut pretty specifically and polished. 
uh, to a pretty uh, uniformity. And again, they were covered in gold. Now, in the 1530s, you had the Spanish coming over to the Americas and conquering the Incan Empire and basically stripping the temple of its gold. And if you remember from the Mays Cobb from earlier in the Indigenous Americas unit, we talked about the garden of golden statues uh, in Cori Concha, and they just took all that gold, took the gold off the temple, and built a Christian church in a Spanish Baroque style right on top of the temple to the sun. So that's why here's Cori Concha, at least the original part right here. And then on top of it, and here's the front facade, is Santo Domingo, the Spanish Baroque Christian church that they built instead. And all of this gold right here at the altar, that all comes from the statues and the gold leaf that was on top of the temple. And so you know, the spoils of that battle between the Incan uh, people and leaders and the Spanish. So it's a really interesting now building kind of a combination of old Incan temple and that newer, at least uh, early 16th century church um, of the Spanish. And then you have also this other structure that's located above uh, the city of Cusco. It's now what's left are the walls of Saskawaman. And it is um, probably the remnants of a fortress that was used to watch over and kind of protect the Incan Empire in Cusco. And here is really where you see the cool Incan architecture in terms of stone masonry be at the forefront, especially this picture over on this side. Notice how the stones are not cut and shaped to a uniformity that you saw in the temple. They are all cut specifically so that they fit directly next to the stones that are already in place. So all of the stones are different sizes, different shapes. Uh, they have a you know, various amount of sides. And in this particular fortress up above, they're huge. And you can see that here, this person, little tiny person here, big, massive stone. So I uh, just wanted you to see that because that particular image, because you really get a sense of the size. And here, you know, even though you have remnants, we think perhaps this is where the Incans stayed and tried to defend themselves from the Spanish forces coming in to take over Cusco. Um, not much else to tell you about here. Um, you know, you had women brought from all over the empire to be weavers and to make the corn beer to, you know, have at political, uh, ceremonies. They might be brought in to be wives. Men were brought here from all over the empire, or I should say boys were brought over to, uh, learn about Incan culture and to be educated and then go out to the rest of the empire and spread that knowledge. Uh, so really, Cusco is the heart center of the Incan empire, the axis mundi of their empire, this close connection to the cosmos and how it was organized and their gods, especially the sun god, who they believed that they were direct descendants of. So again, that city of Cusco, um, unit five of the indigenous Americas.